Anyone who's been following my channel for a little while probably knows that I've made a ton of videos about Florida, and recently I completed an entire road trip around the state of Florida. So in today's video, I want to give you seven things that I learned about Florida that I didn't know. Even though I know a bunch of things about Florida, guys, I've been living here for 13 plus years now. There's always something new to learn. I'm a learner by nature. I love learning new things, and part of this big adventure was just a great learning experience, and I'm so happy that I did it and that I get to share some of these wonderful things with you here today. The first thing, Florida is a lot more diverse than I originally thought. What do I mean by this? Well, I mean a lot of things by this. We can start with just the overall sights and sounds of the land. When you go to different cities in Florida, the landscape changes quite a bit. You know, a lot of people have this idea in mind when they think of Florida, they think of the cookie cutter HOA neighborhoods. And while we do have a lot of those down here in Florida, we also have a ton of unique individual towns that you would never know about and never knew existed unless you go there and see them for yourself. And by doing so, you realize just how different these places are not only in architectural design, but also just in the overall vibe of the city, the type of people who live there, how they act and think, as well as just the lay of the land. Obviously the geography here in Florida is a lot of land, a lot of water uh, mixed together. So, you know, depending on the city, the, the layouts can be quite a bit different. And besides just the layouts of the city being different, the actual geography does change here a little bit as well. A lot of people have the idea in mind that Florida is completely flat and I used to think the same thing until I did this road trip because let's face it most of it is flat but the northwestern part of Florida you actually get a lot of you know rolling hills and things like that. Tallahassee's the perfect example of it even in Ocala they had some rolling hills and I mentioned in a couple of those videos of how much it felt like the Midwest over there and the overall design and look of the town and you know you have a lot of horse ranches and farms and you know rolling hills going through the countryside like that it didn't feel like florida at all to me because my vision of florida is driving past all the skyscrapers and being by the beach and looking at the views of the bay and the skyline and boating and things like that so when you do a trip like this or you go around Florida and to try to see things for yourself, you'll realize just how different a bunch of places are. And that was probably one of the best realizations about this trip. And that's why I wanted to put it number one here on my list. Number two, most beach towns in Florida are just as expensive, if not even more expensive than Miami Beach where I live. So before I did this trip, I had this preconceived notion that Miami Beach was probably one of the most expensive areas to live in in Florida, and it turns out that's actually not true. In fact, the funny thing is a lot of people always think that west coast of Florida is cheaper to live over there because it's more retirement based and things like that. That might have been the case a few years ago, but now I would say it's equally as expensive if not more expensive to live in the beach towns over there because a lot of those beach towns don't have a lot of these big extravagant high rises like we do here and let's face it with big buildings equals you can put more people in and the price can be a little bit lower because you have more availability versus over there you have a lot more houses on the water and more low-rise style buildings so there's just less available housing options and when the demand is really high like it is right now over the past few years moving here the prices of those places can go up very quickly so not just on the west coast of Florida but I'm talking in the Panhandle and now even up in St. Augustine and that area where I've been having my eye on for a long time and there are still some affordable beach towns to live in, which I will cover in a future video. This is not that video, but just know that that's coming. But I just want to let you know how shocked I was to see the prices of some of these areas. And just to name a few so you get an idea of where I'm talking about here, I'm talking about places like Destin, Florida. I'm talking about places like Clearwater Beach, Florida. I'm talking about St. Augustine, Florida. I'm talking about Longboat Key, Florida. 
a lot of different other ones too, but those are the ones that really come to the forefront of my mind because I kind of knew Destin was expensive, but the other ones, I'm a lot more surprised on how expensive they are compared to where I live right now. Number three, summer starts later in Northern Florida. And I know this for a fact because whenever I left for my road trip, it was already summer down here in Miami Beach. So we left on our trip at the end of April and we returned in the middle of May. And when we left Miami Beach, it was already well into the mid and upper 90s every day. And by the time we got to the northern part of Florida in St. Augustine, it was in the low 80s. And by the time you made it to the Panhandle over by Destin and Panama City Beach and the Fort Walton Beach area, the daily temperatures over there were in the mid to upper 70s. So we're talking a huge change just being six hours north. So it's no secret that obviously the winters and things like that are colder in the northern part of Florida. But besides that, the summer does not seem to come as early as it does down here in South Florida. So basically our summers down here in South Florida seem to be much longer than the summers that they get in the northern part of the state. Number four, the realization of how much I actually like the Gulf Coast or the West Coast of Florida. And I really used to have a bias against that area, not for any reason other than the fact that it just seemed kind of too slow and it was mostly retirees and things like that. And guess what? That was really the case for a lot of years. But the West Coast of Florida has been changing so much over the past few years, even between the, the last time I was there compared to now, things have changed a lot. Not just only in the prices to live there, but also the overall vibe and the type of people who are there. It seems like the generations coming in are of a younger crowd and probably more people like my age. And I like that. And I actually like the slower pace of living over there because I've been in Florida now for 13 years and living in the big city life here, which I've kind of relayed to you guys in the past, has been getting a little bit old. And I could actually see myself relocating to the west coast of Florida. I think the biggest um, drawback for me over there is the red tide situation. I mean, I would be moving over there to be able to take advantage of the beach just like I do here and see the sunsets and things like that. And if there's red tide for a few months out of the year, that would be the biggest disappointment and honestly a deal breaker for me. So I will be keeping an eye on that situation. I'm not moving there tomorrow, but it is on my radar because I just love the overall atmosphere there and I love those West Coast sunsets. Number five, Florida actually has two different time zones. Well, most of the state is on Eastern time, but in certain areas of the Panhandle, I believe it's when you go just west of Tallahassee, you actually cross over into the central time zone. So I didn't even realize this until it was like an accident, basically. Um, our first night over in Fort Walton Beach, I kind of discovered that. I was thinking like, man, today feels like extra long. I'm surprised it's only seven o'clock or whatever. And then I realized like, wait a minute, we actually shifted time zones here. So I didn't expect that, I didn't know that. Maybe some of you out there already knew that, but it was kind of a funny little surprise that you're, you're really like switching time zones in such a small little area. I mean, I guess they gotta draw the line somewhere. It's pretty easy to get it confused if you're coming from like Fort Walton and then just going to Tallahassee a few hours away, you're in a new time zone. Tallahassee's Eastern time zone, Fort Walton Beach, Destin, Panama City, those are all central time zone. Number six is that the villages in Florida is not just for retired people. So I also used to have this idea in my mind that the villages was basically just a giant retirement community. And the only reason I thought that was because I didn't really know much about it. I've never been there before, but it turns out that a lot of people actually live there and work there as well. There's a lot of seasonal residents that still have jobs. There's people that live there full time and still work. And sometimes one spouse is retired, another one is still working. It's very common over there to have that kind of situation in the villages because really all it is, guys, is it's a 55 plus community. So 55 plus just means that you got to be 55 and older to purchase a home there. And I have heard from some of you in the comments that they actually allow a certain percentage of owners to be under 55. I'm not saying that's true or not. It probably is, but that could be the situation. 
And if that's the case, then you might not even need to be 55 to live there. So it's kind of like geared towards that demographic of being a retiree and having a fun place to live and to live out the rest of your days, you know, being active and having fun. But that's not the only person that can live there. And you can definitely still be in your older years working a job and still enjoying living in the villages. Number seven is that Florida is actually a lot bigger than it looks on the map. Florida definitely is not the largest state in the United States, but it certainly isn't the smallest either. And my experience with this road trip was this. We were 17 days on the road traveling around the state of Florida. And to be honest, guys, I thought that was going to be plenty of time to make the trip and see everything we wanted to see and kind of take our time. Mm -mm, that's not how it went at all. In fact, we really had to keep moving our asses to really keep up with filming all the places I wanted to get to and at least visit some spots. We definitely spent more time in some areas than others and that was mainly because we were looking for possibly a new place to live as well as experiencing new areas in Florida that we really haven't been to before. But even though we had 17 days on the road, it still went by in the blink of an eye and it was not enough time to explore the entire state, not even close. I'm going to show you here on the map what we did. We basically left Miami, we drove up the east coast of Florida, and we made it all the way to St. Augustine. And the goal originally was to make it all the way up to Amelia Island and get to the northernmost part of the eastern coast of Florida. But by the time we got there to St. Augustine, we quickly realized that you know, it's still a long drive to Tallahassee. That's somewhere that we wanted to make it to as well as other areas in the Panhandle because that's the furthest area away from Miami. So we really wanted to make it there because the chances of us going there again in the near future were probably pretty slim. It's easier to make it to the St. Augustine area than it is to make it to the Panhandle just because it's farther away. So we decided to skip everything north of St. Augustine. We made it to the panhandle of florida and we made it as far west as fort walton beach originally the plan was to make it to pensacola which is already getting pretty close to alabama but because of bad weather we decided to just head back from there we made it all the way back down to ocala we planned on stopping in gainesville for a day or two as well but there was no time because it was either that or seeing ocala and the villages so you just have to make your choices when you're out doing this stuff guys and then, because I really liked Daytona Beach, we ended up going back there for half a day, doing some house hunting. And then we went all the way back from Daytona Beach over to Clearwater in one day. And then we stayed in that area for a couple days. And then from there, we started inching our way down the Gulf Coast until it was time to go back home to Miami. So we ended up making it down from Clearwater, down to the Sarasota area in Bradenton, and then down by Venice, Florida. And then we ended things over in Fort Myers, and then it was time to go back to Miami. But even then, you can see we made one giant loop around the state of Florida, and we only saw a fraction of the different places and cities that you guys talk about in the comments and ask me about in the comments. So there is so much to explore here. And that's really the biggest takeaway that I wanted to give you guys is that Florida is just a lot bigger than it looks on the map. And anybody that's thinking about moving down here really needs to come and check things out for themselves because what one city is like is not going to be like that somewhere else most likely and your experience here living down in florida can be vastly different depending on where you live that's for sure now if you guys haven't checked out any of my travel videos yet make sure you go ahead and check some of those out i'll have a few of them linked down below i'll have one of them linked right over here and i'll catch you guys over there in the next video